Okay, um, so the last section of the finance unit is um, something called the present value in contrast with the future value. Um, the present value of an annuity and something called amortization. If you ever buy a house, you will get um, what's called an amortization schedule. And all that is is telling you like how you're going to pay off your loan, um, like how much of each payment applies to your principal slash how much of it goes to your interest. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you a formula for present value, but let's talk about what it is in comparison to future value. Um, the present value of an annuity, remember an annuity is just something with a regular payment, something with a periodic payment. Um, this is the value um, before interest has been added. Okay, whereas future value, remember, was the amount that already included the interest, right? So I'm not saying that interest won't be added at some point, but the present value is the amount that the account is worth before that interest has gotten a chance to work. <clears throat> so here is the formula for present value, and it's going to look somewhat similar to the one for future value, but again, just a little bit of shifting. So you're still going to have a big fraction here, okay? Um, and the interest rate is still going to go on the bottom, okay? But remember, the interest rate is not just the rate, right? It's the rate divided by um, the number of frequencies, okay? Um, or how many times a year, I mean. And then this is what goes on the top. One minus parentheses, one plus I to the negative N power. <clears throat> Okay, so notice it looks kind of similar, right? But how is it different? The top is kind of shifted, right? Remember the future value had the parenthesis term first, but the biggest thing is that we have a what kind of exponent instead of a positive one, a negative exponent, okay? Um, and then just in case you've forgotten, I mean, we just kind of talked about it, but um, remember that I is going to be the rate over the M, Okay, and N equals the number of payments. <clears throat> so let's talk about some examples just in everyday life of when you might want to um, talk about present value. Okay, um, anytime that a company or bank or something is talking about the cash price for something, that's going to be the present value, okay? Because what does the cash price not include at least yet? If you go buy a car, the, the sticker price on the car is not with the interest included. That would be like if you had the cash in your pocket, right? So that would be the amount before interest, okay? Um, so with cash prices for um, cars or houses, okay? Some situations, they might call that the sticker amount. It literally means, like, if you were to go car shopping, what would be on the sticker on the window, okay? So when you buy a $20,000 car, it's only $20,000 if you have cash to pay for that right now, right? If you finance it, you're going to pay what compared to the $20,000, more or less? More. More, because you are going to pay someone else what? interest on top of the 20000 right? Um, but another way to kind of describe present value could be um, the starting amount in an account. And again, this would be before interest is added. So let's look at an example of this, and we're going to see if we can punch this into our calculator too. So um, I want you to find the present value of $800 a quarter for seven years at 12% interest.
compounded quarterly. And then I also want you to find um, how much interest will be earned. And that phrase will be is actually significant, okay, because the interest hasn't been added yet, right? We're figuring the amount before interest has been added. So no surprise um, with this one. It tells you what formula you need to use. It tells you, hey, we're finding present value. Okay. It also tells you how frequently we're compounding. So we're going to use the formula above. So it's going to be present value equals. So the payment is always the same as um, the deposit amount. So depending on the wording of the problem. So what is the periodic payment slash deposit we're making? 800, okay, and then we set up a bracket and a fraction within that bracket, okay, and then before we move on, let's um, set up what I is just so we get it right, okay, so what would I be or how would I get it at least? 0.12 over how many times a year is quarterly? Four, and then let's go ahead and figure out what N is also, okay, so if it's four times a year for seven years, it's how many total payments? 28. So the fraction that goes on the bottom looks like this. And then on the top we have 1 minus 1 plus that same fraction, but raised to the negative 28 power. Remember this formula has a negative exponent in it. By the way, that's not going to give us a negative quantity of money. That wouldn't make sense, right? A negative quantity of money would mean someone's paying us, which isn't happening. Um, what do negative exponents give us, actually? Fractions. Okay, so it's just an amount that's going to basically make the amount smaller in some way. Um, all right, so what do you want, need to insert here to make sure your calculator does it right? You need parentheses here, okay, and here. So um, I don't know how to keep repeating it other than to say anything with more than one part to it, you should be surrounding that thing with parentheses. Okay, so in this case, it's the top has more than one part and so does the bottom also, okay? So we're going to treat brackets. Do you all remember how we did this before? How do we treat brackets when we punch them in the calculator? Yeah, twice, right? Well, I just mean you treat them like what other thing? Like yeah, you treat them like a parenthesis. But yes, we will need to hit it twice. So it's like one for the outer bracket, and then it's one for the red um, parentheses that I inserted there. So then it's one minus, open another set of parentheses, right? One plus 0 0.12 divided by 4, close parentheses, and raise that to the what power? Negative 28, okay? And then come out of that and close the top, right? We're done with the top. And now what? Fraction bar means what operation? Division. So divided by another open parentheses, 0 0.12 divided by 4, close the parentheses for the bottom, and then finally, don't forget your final bracket, right? So another close for the bracket. And notice, again, my calculator makes that big because it's like connecting it with the original open bracket that I punched in. Um, and so that is not right, okay? So I didn't really do this on purpose, but this tells you that something went wrong, right? Um, so um, because that's not a reasonable amount, right? That's only $18. So something's up, right? So when you have this happen, and to be honest, I didn't do it on purpose, but let's see if we can figure it out. If you have an error like this happen, do second enter if you have the TI calculators. And then what it does is repeats what you just did, but it allows you to use the error arrow to go back and kind of edit it. So I already kind of know what I forgot. So what did I forget? Something kind of important. I forgot the 800 at the beginning, right? So then you can just go insert the 800 at the beginning. Okay, so if you get an answer that doesn't make sense, don't go with it, right? That doesn't make sense that it would start out being $18, right? Um, and then it's only $18 at the beginning, and then it's worth $800 a quarter. Like, that's not possible, okay? When I put in the 800, it's like going over the numbers I already put. Is there a button next to the It's going, what do you mean, over them? Oh, you mean it's, it's try to type over. Yeah, you need to use the insert, which I did. See how it's above the delete button? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you have to do insert because otherwise it, the default is that it writes over what you did. Yeah.
You have to actually do it for every key, which is kind of a pain. So I had to do insert for the eight, insert for the zero, insert for the zero. Um, but then notice, now why don't you like that? All right, so we're just doing all sorts of errors here. So if it says syntax error, try to say go to, and it'll try to tell you what it is. So at this point, I might need to just scrap it and start over, but I'm going to see if I can find my error. I really don't know what it doesn't like. Oh, I got rid of that somehow. I think my insert didn't work. Like that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so notice when you say go to, it tried to find it, but it ended up just putting the cursor at the end. In other words, it was like, I don't know what you did here. Okay. It tries to figure it out. Um, finally, we got an answer there. Okay. Um, so don't give up. I mean, I didn't get frustrated and just throw the calculator across the room, right? You're going to have some times when things don't seem right or when you get an error and just try to troubleshoot it and figure out what it is, okay? Um, figure out what the problem was. So $15,011.29, that is what the present value, if you were to receive payments of $800 a quarter for seven years, okay? Um, so let's see if we can figure out the interest also. Okay, so when you figure out the interest, remember it's just the difference between something, right? It's the difference between what was contributed versus um, what we have in the end, okay? Which amount's going to be smaller? So you need to think about this for a minute. Which amount's going to be smaller? The present value that doesn't include interest or the other amount that would include interest? The present value is going to be smaller, right? So we actually need to um, list that second. So we need to do the payments first, right? So it's going to be $800 payments times 28, and then minus the $15,011.29, because this is larger than 15000 So let's figure out what that is. 800 times 28 is 22400 And the difference between 22400 and $15,011.29 must have been the interest that was earned. So that's a difference of 7,388.71. Okay, so um, most of you are young, you don't have a lot of experience with investment. So let me tell you kind of what this is. Um, I know you've all seen it. Have y'all seen those JG Whitworth commercials, 877 Cash Now? If you've watched TV in the middle of the day in the summer, you have seen those commercials. Like I could sing you the song, but I won't, okay? Um, but do you ever listen to what they're saying? They're like, um, if you have some sort of structured settlement, they're going to give you money for all of that right now. So let's say you were in an accident or something and you made some sort of deal or um, you had some sort of investment from grandma or something where they were paying you, say, $500 a month. Okay? What companies like the J.G. Wentworth are really horrible ripoff deals, FYI. Um, but what they do is they're like, you don't want to wait you know, and have it take five years and pay off $500 a month. So how about we'll give you $20,000 right now, okay? So in other words, they're saying the present value of that payment is worth $15,000 or $20,000 or whatever to them, and they're asking you to take a lesser amount, in other words, okay? Why do people still do it, though? Why are people willing to take a lesser amount? Because when are they going to get it? They need their cash now, right? That's what the commercial says, okay? Um, that whiny little guy that says, I need cash now, okay? Um, but that's why it happens that way, right? Um, another example of that is, have you ever bought a lottery ticket? Like, not a scratch-off, but like a lottery ticket where you're choosing the numbers. Have you ever paid attention to the two payment frequencies you can have, okay? You can either get a payout right now of all of the money, okay? Or you can take, like, such and such amount per year for 20 years or something, okay? The amount per year for 20 years is always more. Why is it more? Yeah, well, like, you're basically, the reason you're going to get more is because you're being patient, right? And you're going to basically earn a little bit of interest along the way, okay? Why do some people still take the cash value even though it's less? Because it's right, well, maybe. Um, honestly, sometimes I think I might want to take the cash now because then I don't have to trust the government's going to keep paying me for 20 years. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know that I really want the government like being in charge of paying me, doling out my money for 20 years. So I might actually take the interest right away because then what could you do with all of the money if you took it right away, even though it was less? 
you could invest it and you would have control over it, right? So I'm saying I actually probably would take the lump sum, okay? But the reason it is less is because you're not getting to get the interest along the way like you would if you were like, hey, just give me $100,000 a year for 20 years or something, okay? Well, it would have to be more than that. In reverse to that kind of like, I know it's better like pay a car up front, but in yeah. reality you get the zero interest for five years uh -huh. and it's like, let them hold your money into the Right. Yeah, and in that case, there, it's really not even a present value situation because there is no interest. But yeah, it, absolutely. Um, for right. Years. And that's another argument. Um, so a lot of you are young and you're just now starting to pay your own taxes, but you really should not be the kind of person that gets a huge tax return at the end of the year because if you are, you're basically loaning the government your money for 12 months, okay? Interest-free because they don't pay you any interest. So um, most financial professionals will tell you it's actually better if you work it so that you have that money for yourself every month and then you owe about zero at the end, okay? So that's actually the goal. The goal is not to get enough money to purchase a car with cash when you get a tax return. That actually means you have handled your taxes poorly, okay? What is better is if you're right at about zero and then they don't owe you any money and you don't owe them any money um, because there is no interest paid on that kind of money. So. Um, but yeah, what you're saying is absolutely right. Like if it's 0% interest, why would you take your own money and give it all to them right now? Um, cause you could be doing other things with that money. Theoretically, you could be earning interest on that money while you just dole out little payments to them as you go. Um, so, okay. Um, so let's look at, um, another one. So if you're going to be interested in finance, I know a lot of you are business majors, but like some of you are, you know, marketing majors, some of you are um, general business, most of you are probably general business, some of you are accounting, some of you are finance, all different kinds of things. But um, if you're going to be kind of more on the finance side, um, there is actually an investment called an annuity. So I want to talk about that right now. The definition of annuity is just something on a periodic payment plan. But an annuity with an investment is um, a specific type of investment that typically older um, people in retirement use. And what it is, is it's like you're going to um, give the finance company slash bank some money and they're going to dole it out to you sometimes for the rest of your life, okay, so that you have some sort of controlled payment plan. So let's finish writing out the problem and then we'll talk about kind of what it is and how to solve it. So how much should you pay for this annuity if you want to receive payments of $5,000 annually for 10 years. So a lot of people in retirement will do these sorts of savings plans because maybe they like sell their um, lifelong house or something and they have a lump sum of money, but they want to ensure that they have like living expenses paid for however much time of year, okay? Or however many years, I mean. Um, but a lot of times these type of investments are marketed to people in retirement, okay? So it's like you give us this amount of money and we'll make sure you have such and such amount per month for you to live on for the rest of your life. That can be some of the annuities. Or some of them will be like this one is for the next 10 years. Okay. Um, so let's underline kind of some key phrases that are important. Um, so one is annually. Okay, that's significant. And then the other sentence that's kind of significant or phrase is how much should you pay for this annuity? Okay. So in other words, it's asking you how much that is worth right? So you're being offered a payment plan and they're asking you how much it's worth, okay? So this is definitely present value because it is asking how much it's worth basically right now with interest not being added yet. So 
So we're going to find the present value using the formula. So it looks like payment amount, which is 5000 times the fraction in the brackets, right? Um, and so we'll do it off to the side again. But what is interest this time? Because it's annually, we haven't done an annual one in a while. Okay, so because it's annually, what do we know about interest? It's actually just going to be 0 0.065 over 1. So in this case, do I really need a fraction for I? I really don't, right? Um, and I also don't really need to think about N that hard, right? Because if it's annually, it's only how many times a year? Once for 10 years. So N is actually just 10. So this formula is going to be actually much simpler. So on the bottom, I can just put this. Okay, would it hurt if I put it over one instead? It wouldn't hurt, right? But it's just extra key strokes that you really don't necessarily need to do. Um, and then on the top, you'll have one minus one plus that same 0 0.065. And then don't forget this. It's not to the 10th power. It's to the what? Negative 10th. Okay. So in this case, I don't really need parentheses where. Where will it really not be necessary to insert parentheses? In the denominator, right? But I still need them in the numerator. Okay. So, um, but again, if you were to insert an extra set around the denominator, it wouldn't change anything. Okay, I'm just saying you don't actually need them. Um, all right, so let's figure it out. So it'll be 5,000 times what? What do I need to do here? How many opens? One for the bracket, one for the parentheses, right? So two. And then it's 1 minus parentheses, um, 1 plus 0 0.065, raised to the negative 10th power, close off the numerator, and then divide it by that denominator, which you can put parentheses around if you wish, but you really don't need it. But you do have to close the big parentheses slash bracket at the end, right? So regardless, you have to have a closed parentheses of some sort. So if you push enter, you're going to get um, 35,944.15 if you round it. What if you to go back and like correct? Second enter. Second enter is what allows you to edit. Okay. It just repeats the whole thing again. Okay. Um, if that isn't working, by the way, um, if you try it a couple of times, I mean, I really stuck with it when I made my errors earlier, but if you can't get it to work, just scratch it and start over. Okay. I was just saying, if you know your mistake and you can edit it easily, it can be nice to have that. Um, so now let's figure out the interest. Okay. So remember the interest is just the difference between what we paid versus um, what we have, okay? So um, what we would be paid if we were this customer is we'd be paid $5,000 10 different times, right? That was the payment frequency, okay? So we don't even need a calculator for that, right? What is this amount? 50,000, okay? So you're gonna receive payments for $50,000, but how much did you only have to invest to get that? Thirty-five thousand six hundred ninety-three. What we got? Oh wait, that's not the right amount. Um, so, hang on. Let me see what I did here. Um, so I pre-figured these out, and I'm not getting the same answer. So, did anyone get this amount instead of what I got here? You got this amount, the six ninety-three thing. You did. Okay. Um, so let me punch that in again. Oh, I got exactly what you got. You got this. All right, so let's see. Um, let me see if I changed anything. I don't think I did. So we're just going to enter it one more time. So 1 minus uh, 1 plus 0 0.065 raised to the negative 10 power. Notice in this case, it's not that much different. So I don't think it would be as easy to troubleshoot. Yes, yeah, I still think that's the right amount. So maybe what I had prefigured was wrong. Um, so this shouldn't be this. It should be the 35944 Okay, so this is the contribution amount. Um, and so then we end up getting a difference of $14,306.82. And what does this difference represent again? 
The difference is the what? Interest. Okay. That is what it is. That is what it is. Okay, so what we're going to do to make this easier, and that's why I had a different amount, we're just going to change it to this. So just change our interest rate because then, then everything you wrote down will be right. So if we just change this one number to what I entered it as, but you're absolutely right. What he's saying is I should have said 0 .0665 and I didn't, right? So let's just change the problem to six and a half and then it's correct. So sorry about that. This is a, a day for errors for me apparently. Okay. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more um, for the last couple of minutes about this type of investment because I feel like we don't have a whole lot of um, experience with this, right? This is probably not something especially that a young person would really think about. So um, what this is, is someone could give a bank slash investment company $35,944, okay? And then they will dole it out to them in $5,000 payments for 10 years, okay? Why is that beneficial to the customer? How much are they actually going to receive for their $35,944 they invested? They're going to get a total of how much? $50,000. So they're happy because they earned an extra how much? Interest, okay. But what is the bank slash investment company probably doing with their money? Investing it. They're probably investing it and earning a lot more than 6.5%, so they don't care about giving you an extra $14,306 because they're making probably at least that, if not more. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. So that's what this type of investment is. It's like, I'll give you some money, and then you'll dole it out to me as we go. Okay. Um, but notice you'll always get more when you always get more than what you put in, otherwise you'd never do it, right? You wouldn't give someone control of your money unless they were gonna pay you what? Interest along the way. So this amount is always supposed to be more than what you contributed here, okay? Um, okay, so we're gonna talk more about that type of investment